Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl for Nolungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this today. We're going to react to You Will Die as You Lived. Very emotional, Mohammed Hobbes. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. You know, we've had a crazy two weeks in Sydney. Uh, we've had a scare earlier this week with, you know, brother Ali Banat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa. Yesterday, we buried a very dear brother, Muhammad Nagi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him jannah. And just today, wallahi, you know, I got a phone call very early in the morning and we had to bury brother Wasim Shami, you know, 22 years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us so much signs. You know, these last two weeks have been crazy. Every single day, Allah sends us sign after sign, sign after sign. When are we going to take our lives far more seriously? Because every one of us has this deception, these, these high hopes that I've still got a long life ahead of me. And I look at my life and I say to myself, am I ready to go? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life that you're currently living? And maybe you're not living a haram life, but these things are occupying me from the real reason why I'm here. And that's to worship Allah. You know, these last few brothers that have died with cancer, you know, especially brother Muhammad Nagi, you know, I really want to focus on this brother because he's really affected me. You know, I look at this brother's life and I say, you know, Alhamdulillah, he was lucky and fortunate enough to have time. And yani Allah gave him a cancer and the way he dealt with it was amazing. It was incredible. You know, the Prophet of Allah says, remember Allah in good times. Allah will remember you in times of difficulty. And this for me was Nagi all over. Muhammad nailed this. This was a man who loved Allah and his prophet when he was fine. He was healthy. He was going and coming. He loved da'wah. He loved to talk to people. He loved this community. And everyone knew him for this. Wallahi, whenever I would visit him, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this. Alhamdulillah. He was always in high spirits always thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, two days before he fell into his last coma, I went to visit him and so much passion and so much energy. You know, he sat me down, he's telling me, you know, and I want to do this and I want to go to Africa, you know, and I want to give da'wah and I want to make this, you know, short film and I want to do this and I want to do that. And so many things, he had so much ideas. I remember walking away, I'm thinking, man, this is a man that's got cancer and look at the energy. You know, his brothers, his brothers were telling me today, that even while he was semi-unconscious, you know, laying there in his bed, he would write letters, you know. He would write letters to his brothers, make sure you feed my wife. Make sure you fill up petrol for my wife. You know, he would think about his wife, even though he was semi-unconscious, he was thinking about his wife. Wallahi, when I visited him in the hospital, he says, I can't wait to go home so I can kiss my mother's feet. I'm alive, I'm perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with me, and that's never crossed my mind. You know, he would sit there, he would sit there in bed, and the nurse would walk in, a non-Muslim nurse would walk in, and he would point with his finger. His brother said, you know, we could never work out, and what's he pointing at? He, he used to point, telling his brothers, give the nurse some sweets, form of da'wah. Oh, wow, Allahu Akbar. Why just the things this brother used to do affected me so much. You know, never did I ever go to Punchbowl Mosque. Never did I ever go there, except I would see this brother there. Always, he was there, give salam, big smile on his face. He's talking to the brothers. And the Prophet of Allah, he says, you know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you see someone frequent in the masjid, then bear witness that this man has Iman. I think, wow, why this brother has affected me so much that I'm envious and I ask myself, you know, how would I leave? Because Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the angel of death will not send you a WhatsApp message. He's not going to send you an email. Trust me, there's no letter coming in the mail saying, hey, you've got two weeks, get ready, I'm coming around. When he comes, he comes unannounced. And look at the life you're living now. 
Look at the lifestyle you're in now. Look at your relationship with Allah now. That's a very good indication of the way you're going to die. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give Brother Muhammad Nagi and all the brothers that have passed away and all the sisters that have passed away. Wallahi, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify them, to forgive them for their shortcomings, to give them the highest level of Jannah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all of those that are sick and suffering. You know, make it easy on the families of those that have lost loved ones. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality of life. It's something you should be envious of. Because what that reminded me of is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Whatever you live on, the deen that you live on, whatever you claim it to be, whatever you lived on, trust me, that's what you're going to die on. And don't you dare for a moment think that every person that gets cancer or every person that goes through a test like that, that it's a fault, you know, that yeah, it's a good thing for him. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the opposite. You see, it happened to be good for him because he lived a life that was pleasing to Allah. He remembered Allah in good times. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him in times of difficulty. Trust me, I believe that Allah didn't give it to him simply because Allah is Muhammad Nagy and he happens to be special. No, he worked hard when things were good, when things were easy, when people usually forget Allah, when people usually don't have time for deen, when people usually don't have time for the masjid. He remembered Allah then, so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him when he needed him the most. Allah there remembered him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stayed with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to die bi-idhnillah successfully. Something that many of us think, yeah, brother, I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah, look at me, I'm leaving, I'm going, I'm coming. Of course I'm going to die on Tawheed. How do you know this? What proof do you have that you're going to die on this? Wallahi, I know people, Muslims, born Muslims, raised Muslims. I know people here in Sydney, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them cancer. And trust me, they didn't deal with it like Muhammad dealt with it. And, you know, I'm going to share some stories with you and you might say, yeah, man, wow, that's a bad Muslim. Is he really? Because honestly, we're living the same life. One guy gave me a call and said, my brother, there's a 54 year old Muslim, never prayed in his life, never prostrated once in his life. He said, my brother, he's dying. And he, we really think he's at his last stages. Please, this guy's a family friend. Yani, there's no one in the family, no one in the family that even prays. He said to me, please, man, do you think maybe you can go? I don't know, Allahu Alam, maybe you can say some words. Whatever. I said to him, yeah, khalas, whatever. Tell the family that I'll be there tomorrow. He calls me up a few hours later. He said to me, brother, please make sure you don't go visit that brother, man. I said to him, why not? Because as soon as he heard that a religious guy is going to come visit him, he lost it, bro. He lost it. In fact, he ordered the hospital that no one is to visit me from now on except my immediate family. He died two days after that. Now, I'm not saying he died on kufr or he, no, no, no. Wallahi, well, whatever he died on, that's between him and Allah. But because you live that life, you die on that. You live that life, you die on that. And I want you to think about your life. Because tonight I'm not, you know, I'm not questioning your faith. I'm not questioning, do you love Allah? Habibi, we all talk the talk. Brother, I love Allah, I'll die for Allah. You know, I love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'll die for his sunnah. Yep, 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 yep. Habibi, Allah doesn't look for lip service. Allah looks for action. You look at your life. Do you really love Allah? Do you really love Salah? Do you really love the Masjid? How do you know? But look at your relationship with it. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, if you're a wali of Allah, if you're a gun, if you're an absolute gun, you come to Jumu'ah's prayer. And not just any Jumu'ah. Wallahi, I get frank brother. Can you tell me what time is the khutbah there? I'm like, yeah, brother. So the khutbah starts at 1.15. He says, no, 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 no. As in what time do you pray the salah for the khutbah? I said, brother, I'm telling you, the khutbah is at 1.15. Who cares when the prayer is? You need to be there at 1.15. He says, brother, I'm not interested in the khutbah. What time is the salah so I can double park? I come in, I pray my two rakat. I gotta go, bro. You live on that deen, you die on that deen. 
You see, every one of us here, and I'm sure, wallahi, I don't doubt, every one of us thinks, brother, I'm the best Muslim. Wallahi, I love Allah. I love the Quran. What well, do you really love the Quran? How much of it have you memorized? I'm 33. Uqsam Billah, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much Quran I've memorized. Wallahi, I'm embarrassed to tell you. Halak, come pull me aside to me. Hey, Hubbas, you love the Quran? Astaghfirullah, bro, what are you saying? Well, I'll die for the Quran. Do you really, you spinner? Do you really? You still know the same five surah of Quran that you memorized when you were six years old. Allahu Alam, if you even read it properly. 30 years of life has passed you and you haven't increased a single verse of Quran. And you want to come play the violin and tell me how much you love the Quran. Habibi, look, you're not standing in front of me, you're standing in front of Allah. But do you really? So don't think everyone that gets cancer, well, he deals with it nice. Brother, yeah, cancer is good. It gives you a time to repent. It gives you a chance. Yeah, I wish I get cancer. Allahu Akbar. Look how arrogant we are. Why is it that when you think cancer, why is it that when you think cancer, everyone buckles? But didn't Allah tell you you can die at any moment? Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of a doctor. Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of a non-believer with a suit and a tie and a little certificate on the back. Some of us have more yaqeen in his words than the words of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Really, when you read the hadith and when you read the ayat of Quran, that that can come to you at any moment, you don't panic. But when a doctor tells you, look brother, after looking at your tests, Allahu alam, we think you got about two weeks. <gasps> two weeks, is that all I have? You didn't react the same when Allah said you can die any moment. You didn't react the same. Every morning in the Sahih Hadith, what's the dua when you make up in the morning? I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen next week. Last night, what's the dua? Does any of the kids know the dua you make when you wake up? Anyone know? Alhamdulillah, Alladhi, Ahyana. You were dead last night. You were dead last night. You were dead. Didn't change you. So yeah, we're here for Muhammad Nagy because yeah, but but really you should be here for yourself. We should be questioning ourselves. But really, what din am I really living? Because that's the din you're gonna buy on, trust me. And when Allah takes your soul, when Allah takes your soul, trust me, the condition of your din at that moment of death, if you were to live for another million years, you weren't gonna move an inch from that condition. You know, sometimes you hear about a brother who died without salah. Wallah, he had intentions to pray. Wallah, brother, you know, he's the... Habibi, he died without salah. And, if, and trust me, if he died without salah, that means that when Allah took his life, he was never going to pray. He was never going to pray. Where you go, that's how you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the mashayikh, he actually mentions, he says that, that a family called him to come visit someone who's dying. An old man was on his deathbed. So the shaykh says, he says, I went, I went to the house. It's an old man, and they're asking me, look, can you come see our dad? He said, when I got there, he said, I parked my car, I got out of the car, and the, and the house was blaring, blaring, Um Kulthum, you know, this Egyptian singer. He said, they were blaring it. He said, I couldn't believe my ears. He said, at least, يعني, هلا, يعني, at least I'll pray, you know, play Quran, something. He said, I got to the house, and they're blaring music, and their father's dying. He said, so obviously they picked up and they were a bit uncomfortable, so they turned off the music and played some Quran. You know what happened? The father from the room is on his deathbed. He said, turn that stuff off and put her back on. She soothes my soul, man. The life you live, that's how you're going to die. Don't kid yourself. Don't look at others, but look at yourself. How many more messages do you have to hear? 
How many more funerals do you have to attend? I'm not doubting that we're Muslims. I'm not doubting. What quality, bro? What quality? What quality? Today your kid gets a little bit sick. Of course, you don't say it on your tongue, but deep down in your heart. Brother, why do Allah do this to me for, man? I pay my zakat. What? So you pay zakat, what, yani, what, Allah owes you something? Or, or, or? No, but I'm just saying, like, alhamdulillah, I pray. You know, I give money in charity, and this guy, he doesn't pray. And his kids, there's nothing wrong with them. And yani, brother, why is Allah? Is that how you're going to stand in front of Allah with a heart like that? So please, my brothers, you know, wallahi, we need to make a change. I'm jealous of this brother because he's one of the rare brothers that I was able to see. And again, of course, this is my opinion. I believe he died successfully. And for that, I'm jealous. For that, I'm not jealous. I'm actually dirty, bro. That's, that's, that's how jealous I am. Because I don't know what my faith is going to be. So please, my brothers and sisters, wallahi, I really hope tonight can be a change in our lives. Enough. Enough. Wallahi, wallahi, we've promised Allah again and again. Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes. Hajj comes and Hajj goes. And this person dies and this person goes. And this contract is finished. And we still keep giving Allah the same excuses and we haven't moved an inch. This needs to stop. You need to make a change. You need to better your life. Because the deen that you're on now, that's what you're dying on. How is your salah now? How? How is your salah? Allah says, successful are those believers. Successful are those believers whom in their salah they have, they have concentration. These people are successful. Habibi, I've been praying for over 10 years. I've been praying for over 10 years. And uqsam billah, I still to this day in my salah, Habibi, I think about anything and everything except Allah. He's quite passionate and aggressive about what he believes in. And I wanted to say is, what I wanted to say is, uh, whether you do good in life, whether you do bad, your life comes to an end at some point. People that do good sometimes expect to die um, less painless deaths. Maybe you just sleep and die. And the people that do bad, the the People would maybe think they'll die maybe in a car accident, such rough things. But if you've noticed, it, you can't choose how you die. It can be cancer. Cancer is a very big thing to some people. It's it's not easy. It's not going to be a peaceful um, process that you go through. And yet you've been good throughout this time. And that those that do bad, that just close their eyes and just never wake up, didn't go through any pain, what? but we don't know what they go through anyway. What I'm trying to say is at the end of the day, we have to look at our lives and the way we're living. Like he said, we have to change because there is these people going through the most, like going through bad things right now, but they're still good, still good to people that don't believe in the same religion, still good to everyone else. And those should be the examples that we look at. Let's check our souls and believe in God.